Love can be a little bit like a flickering flame. One moment it burns bright, okay? And the other moment it is whisked away into nothing more than a puff of smoke, okay? The heart wanders, wait, the heart fawns upon wander ponder break. Shakespeare, I think, wrote that one, and I can't remember because it was in English class way back in the day, but things just like that one crush you had in high school or the bartender that you fell in love with on a Friday night, you probably went in a little bit over your head, and then once you woke up or got sober, you completely forgot about that love and or person. That is just the human life, and that sucks, okay? But there are cars which did that to us in the same way, a few. And more recently, quite a few of them seem to have come around with the acronym of KDM. But why? Why? Why do we love them and then forget about them immediately after they get released? Why is it these types of cars? I'm Alex, Alex at FI on Instagram, and today we're gonna to be talking about a new version of a KDM that by all definitions should win the hearts and minds of literally everyone that likes to drive cars. A car that when I was a kid was just, I thought a fancy Honda logo that you could get at a Honda dealership because it was just a curse of age. A car that has some serious brass behind it and is trying to make enough waves with it that people stop forgetting that they do occasionally make some pretty damn cool cars. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're gonna to be talking about you wanting to own a Hyundai Veloster N. Fun fact for the day, it was the second official day of Fitment Inc. back in 2017 when I learned what Mario, somebody who's a part of the team, didn't know what a chicken pot pie was. And the only reason I know that was because it showed up on my memories of Facebook. So take that as you will. In non-food facts, if you're a car guy or gal and you got a modified car, be sure to add it to our ginormous gallery where you can enter in your year, make a model and find what fits your car for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension. Fitment is kind of our thing, hence the name. If you are looking for a little bit of help there, you can certainly do so and it's not figment, it's fitment. All right, let's take it back to Hyundai and the Veloster N. We know that the Veloster has been around since 2011 and was a small sport compact with a two plus one door comeback coupe style design. It was a little bit weird when it got released and it still is weird now, but taking the place of the Tiburon, this odd asymmetrical door, manual or, uh, automatic options, inline fours that were naturally aspirated to turbocharge were just enough spunk that a lot of people ended up liking them, especially from Hyundai. And on top of that, they were affordable. I liked them, they were cheap, they were good, they were fun. They only weighed 2,500 pounds, give or take some options and specs. And they started at brand new $18,000. The turbo specifically is where the Veloster really started to catch a lot of people's eyes of people like you and people like me. The turbo would get around 200 horsepower. It would get you some fancy dancy LEDs, okay? It'd get you twin exhausts that make you feel like you got a GT3. Some side skirts and a little bit more aggressiveness that people genuinely just enjoyed. And it gave the car an overall very good look. And again, Hyundai was providing an entry level fun car that most people could get into without much fuss that wasn't a GTI. And it was pretty much just like the Tiburon, just like the Genesis, just like the Scoop, if you remember that one. And even though people picked on Hyundai, tons of people bought these cars. An entry level KDM hot hatch that was enough to warrant a glance without costing an arm and a leg. What is this? Healthy competition? No, absolutely not. I prefer my two to three companies to be dominating the space with 12 to 15 different marks. Thank you very much. There's a stranglehold in the frozen pizza industry, in case you're wondering. The second generation would be released in 2018. Get some softness trimmed out of the, the overall design. It would keep the weird doors. It would get some safety equipment that would now be standard and a multi-link suspension, which was much needed. And even more fun trims that would make you happy if you enjoy hats. I mean, they were really starting to kind of build on this and Hyundai was doing pretty well with the car. Even their top model, the Veloster Turbo R spec was still only $23,785. When your competition was in the early 30s for the base model trim of the comparable type, or even higher than that for the Honda Type R, you were doing pretty darn good in the market segment with picking up people that wanted a car like that. And so Veloster birthed the N nameplate out of their testing facility in Namyang and further proved their capability around the German proving grounds called the Nürburgring. They really wanted to provide even more performance and really make some waves, so they did. The Veloster N would hit the news in 2018 and spout 275 horsepower, 260 foot-pounds of torque, electronically controlled suspension, driving mode, short throw, six speed manual transmission, and a differentiated body that didn't genuinely look like a normal Veloster. It just, it looked like a different car, which was perfect for the mark. I mean, it was a good looking car. It wasn't just rebadged. It was 
reconditioned, all right? It was not head and shoulders. It was the fancy Paul Mitchell stuff. You could get the KDM in 19 inch wheels and enough air that would make the car enthusiast happy for a while before you end up replacing it with carbon fiber. Anyway, it does nothing. New rear spoiler, fascia design, diffuser, high flow exhaust, and tons of smiles. This car was built fun and it worked. Most people that drove this car absolutely fell in love with it. The focus on budget, driving characteristics, passion, and connectedness was paramount in the design and was for the most part pretty well built. People were genuinely worried that the end was going to take a sizable bite from the existing monsters in the game, so much so that people were freaking out a little bit with the price point that it was at, but it didn't. And that's just it. The history of all things KDM is just a little bit like this, and we're here to figure it out because we're done talking about the history of the Hyundai Veloster N. You want that? There isn't that much. It's like two years old, okay? No, we're here to talk about you wanting to own one of these bad boys. So you want a Hyundai Veloster N. Well, grab your plastic restore and your favorite bills to cry on because we're about to talk about what it's like to own this fun, little, slightly confusing car. The Veloster N had a lot of good things going for it. After all, the former boss of BMW's M division, Albert Biermann, spearheaded the actual car's, like, launch. It was quick, good options, and it drove well. The problem the problem is, what was once affordable has now jumped up a couple nickels, and if you want the 2021 version, you're now paying $33,000, more than the GTI. And it's a new trim option, which will undoubtedly have its own quirks and features that'll make Doug DeMauro sweat, not the way that you'd want. But the car is new, and the only known problems are in a few brand new forums with like 27 people in it. A few mentioned the high pressure fuel pump needing priming prior to starting over. Wait prior to turning over. A small percentage of transmissions leaking likely from a defective casing and a tendency for the startups to take a hot minute. There's also a little bit of rattle action happening in the car after about 40,000 miles, but potato potato, that's usually what happens, especially in a hot hatch that's meant to be an entry level sports coupe car. It's just normal, outside of the GTI. But that's where it's the same game as the Kia Stinger. It's a risky car to jump into if you really don't know what to expect. Veloster has done a great job with the car, but it's also a brand new car and you never know what's going to happen really after after 40,000 miles, you can really only use the predecessors and what they've done with other cars, which has been with the Veloster pretty damn good. In addition, the modification of the car is still relatively limited outside of throwing out the basics, and that's okay. I mean, if you really wanna throw on the basics, you're looking at the intake, tune, exhaust. They're pretty much always like the standard three, but there's also some pretty good wheel and tire spec setups because a lot of people have been picking these up. 19 by eight and a half plus 35 on two 35 35s with lowering springs is absolutely perfect. Okay, there's a guy named I Am Resi that's running RFX 11s in the gallery. They look super sick. 18 by eight and a half plus 38s on lowering springs also look really good too. 19s will give you a little bit more of a luxury look, whereas the 18s will give you much more of a hot hatch look. Rarid Juicy. I don't know if I said that. Has one and it looks pretty badass in the gallery. The, 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 the Veloster end could use a little bit more of artist art form wheels. But. but if you're gonna own one, still be aware. It's a Hyundai that's 270 horsepower and heavily focused on the feeling of the car for around $30,000. I mean, they really did focus on the driving experience with this car, which means they're gonna go a little soft in some spots in the car, and we need to all accept that, okay? Prior to purchase, the three-door layout is still a bit unique. The interior is good, but it's still undoubtedly less refined than the GTI S if you are comparing the two. The sports seats are still somewhat boring cloth until you get into a brand new Veloster, which is where you'd aim unless the budget is towards the 2019 version. That's kind of where you're at. Is the Veloster N a slept on hot hatch? In our humble opinion, Yes. Is it a properly fun and good car? Yes. Is it better than the Type R? Exactly. Can it fight against the GTI? In certain trims, sure. But in other trims, Sure. Does it need more love though? And it absolutely does. The Veloster N is a car that comes from a manufacturer that's been pushing the availability of a performance sports car to millions without making a big mess of it. They're not trying to make it this overtly large deal and overhyping and underlivering the car. Sure, it's front wheel drive and sure the Hyundai badge can make some people question its authenticity, but the Veloster N is truly a unique car that offers unadvertised, no lift shifting. It offers smiles per gallon, limited slip differentials that make you feel like you're a better driver than you actually are. And it's overall a very well-built car that is a ton of fun that's gonna make you feel like you're driving something that just almost is a little bit like a Type R. And it's gonna be in colors that do make you look back when you park it at the local autocross event to go and pick up the cones that you accidentally ate because that's what you're gonna wanna do when you own a car like this. But what do you think about the Hyundai Veloster N? Let us know below. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com. If you have a Veloster N, snag some Artisa Art Form wheels so that we can just grow those just a hot minute further. Plus, I 
think they look really good. They're ultra light, they're directional, they look really good. If not, that's fine, I'm just gonna cry. Hyundai, thank you for doing what you do. Even with the weird cars that you make and the odd doors, we're still appreciative. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries and we will see you later. Peace.